All right, hello, fellow coder. Welcome back to the Fresh Vote series, where we are building a real-world Java web app from scratch using Spring Boot and other technology. So in this lesson, we are finally going to get our hands dirty with some real business logic. In the previous video, we sort of did some prettying things up. We prettied up uh, some views and whatnot uh, with Bootstrap, but now we're going to get, hopefully, hit, hit the ground running with... Um, Oh no, we created the uh, the product, sorry. In the previous video, we created the product entity because I'd forgotten about that. But now we're going to expand on the product entity um, via our dashboard. So uh, as you can see, I've already been sort of messing around in my code. So let me go to the login screen and let me log in with password. One, two, three is my password. So fresh votes dashboard here. Um, we want to have a, a, the ability to uh, create a, a new product, right? Uh, also, I kind of want the logo button to be on the right hand side of the screen. So let's do that. Those two things. Let's create a uh, create a create product button and move the logout button. So that's on the dashboard HTML page. Um, so now that we have uh, an idea of um, uh, bootstrap and, and how to use uh, columns and everything, um, this should make uh, the, the process of moving things around on the screen a little bit well, hopefully easier, right? So let's uh, put that in a container. Oh, right, I forgot to bring in, we need to bring in the, um, there's no bootstrap CSS here. So we need to bring that in. And again, in another lesson, hopefully soon enough, I will show you how to create a, uh, what's called a fragment, which is really just a template. Um, and just so that we don't have to keep copy pasting these these uh, imports for CSS and, and everything. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and refresh the page. We should be containerized, so it changes the look and feel a little bit. And then I want to create a row. So I'll have a div, div class row here. And on this row, we will put the uh, dashboard um, uh, h1 and the form. But we will also create div class. Uh, this will be column. Let's see. This should take up the majority of the... Of the you know, we can make it column eight or something. Uh, that'll be there. And then the remainder will be div class column eight plus what is 12? Eight plus four is 12. So I'll put that in there. But then we also want to pull it to the right. So when we do this, the logout button will be here, but we want to pull it all the way to the right-hand side, which I think was uh, usually, it used to be pull right, but now I think it was, oh, uh, what was it, a line right? I don't remember anymore. I think I might have done something like that in... Was it the logout screen where we float right? God, I always forget that. Float right. Did I save it? Uh, maybe that might not work for forms. Uh, form input. Hmm. It is a div class. So maybe that won't work for this. How can we pull that to the right? Um, I don't think we can have. Let's try float right on the form. I don't know if that, there we go. So the float right of the form is what we need to do here. So let's go down to here. Let's refresh. I just deleted the, uh, from the class here, I deleted the float right. So it looks like that's working. And the next thing I want to do is just push it down just ever so slightly. I want to add a little bit of margin top here, uh, maybe somewhere around 1.5 M's just to give it some, some cushion from the top. So there we go. And then outside of here, let's create another row whereby we will have the the new button right so for now the the div class we'll just have column like this this is a good placeholder for just take up the whole the whole width right just take up 12 columns is essentially what what's happening here okay so let's add in the button so we'll have a di uh, not a div a button uh, and the class will be btn i don't know primary i guess Ooh, which reminds me i could probably make this other button the here i can make this into a a btn i don't know secondary which will make it like a, a gray color but it'll change the look and feel because right now the look and feel of that button is kind of boring so now when we refresh it'll make it a little bit nicer uh, oops and i forgot to put a this <laughs> that's a sad little button uh we forgot to put uh content here which is create a product there we go and then we need to actually assign an id to this guy because i want to actually interact with this when i click on it i want it to actually do something so we'll call this um, create product, I guess. And uh, and then when I click on it, I want it to actually uh, put me somewhere else. Ooh, but I'm realizing, okay, so that is one way to do it. So there's essentially two ways to do things. This is where my mind goes. I, I step ahead so many steps uh, and I don't explain. So um, 
there are two ways to essentially uh, work with buttons that do something, right? Uh, this button, when I click on it, I want it to create a product, right? And what that means is we're doing a post. So if you remember your CRUD operations, create, read, update, delete, those are the four things that we can do in a database. And there are sort of matching HTTP requests that go along with those four CRUD operations. Create is, let me let me just outline this, I don't know, in, uh, I guess in here or something, we'll create a comment. So create equals HTTP post, okay? Uh, update equals HTTP, uh, oh shoot, what is it? Um, I often just send it in as a post as well um, because I'm lazy, uh, put. Um, create update, oh sorry, I forgot, read. Create read is an HTTP get, which you're very familiar with, hopefully, and delete is thankfully HTTP delete. Okay, so those are sort of the four things that we have uh, at our disposal. Um, and in this case, we want to create. So we want to do an HTTP post. Okay, so how do we do an HTTP post? Well, there's two ways. One way is to do an AJAX request. This, um, an AJAX call, I should say, is a bit more convoluted, a bit more complex. Um, and, it, and it's actually not necessary in this case. So for an HTTP, uh, for, so for, a, uh, for, so for a HTTP, uh, or an AJAX request rather, um, AJAX is better suited for if you want to stay on the page, but talk to the server and get information back. So a good example of that is like, uh, like a stock ticker or something. So you have a bunch of stocks on a page and you want to constantly update the values of those stocks in real time without refreshing the page every single time. That would be really uh, annoying and, and, and intrusive if the page kept on refreshing over and over and over again uh, whenever you wanted to update data. That's where Ajax comes in. Ajax gets rid of the need to refresh the whole page where you can still interact with the server side, okay? But the reality here is when we click on create a product, we want it to open up a new page anyway. We want to go to a different URL. Um, so because we're opening up a new URL anyway, we're going into a different page, we're essentially, re well, we're not refreshing, but we're bringing up a whole new page. Uh, and then you, you, Ajax here would really be overkill, okay? So we can leverage the other more easier way to do this, which is just using a form, okay? So we're already familiar with forms. So we're gonna be form post, okay? So those are the two ways of doing it, Ajax or just form based. So when someone clicks on create a product here, what we're really gonna do is we're gonna create a form with an action that points to somewhere specific that I'll get to in just a moment. And the method is post, okay? So when they click on it, it'll post to um, the, the end point that we specify in the action, okay? Uh, now, don't forget also, uh, when I was practicing for this video, I forgot, uh, to include the input type hidden uh, CSRF parameter, my bad. Uh, so we need to also include that whenever we're doing a, a post, we need to include that CSRF parameter otherwise, or with a token, otherwise we won't be allowed. It'll give us a forbidden. But right now that's not good enough because right now we're saying uh, do a form post to the page that we're currently on, which means post to the dashboard which is actually not what we wanna do. So let me log in again, because I had to reboot the server. So when I do create a product, I post to the dashboard, um, we don't wanna do that, okay? The, the, well, first of all, the post is not supported because we don't have in our controller, um, we don't have a post mapping. All we have is two get mappings. Oops. Uh, all we have is two get mappings. So if we wanted to, we could say, you know, post mapping and then put in slash dashboard. Um, and then this would sort of work once we, you know, flesh this out with a, an actual uh, method. Uh, but we don't want to do that because what that implies is when we're posting to slash dashboard, that implies, remember we said post is creating, that implies that we are going to be creating a new dashboard. But that's not what we want to do. We want to create a new product, not a new dashboard. So really what we want to do here is we want to post to not the dashboard because this is, this is this is just going to post to the dashboard. We want to post to a new product endpoint, right? And more specifically products. Okay, that's the convention. You always have a pluralized version inside of the uh, URL. At least that's what I've been taught. So um, you want to post to slash products, okay? But 
slash products doesn't exist yet. Okay, so if we refresh the page and said post, uh, it's going to say 404 not found because we don't have a products page. So we need to create a products page. But before we can create a products page, we need to have uh, a controller that goes along with that. So we need to create a new controller. So let's create a new class in the web package called product controller. Okay, and we'll annotate with at controller and we will have a get mapping for slash products and we'll have it public string, you know, get products uh, with a model map because we'll need to put stuff on the model, uh, which will, for now we'll return product, okay? Which doesn't exist yet. We haven't created the product template, which we will do, but more importantly, we want to have a post mapping because that's what we're doing from the dashboard. We're posting to slash products, okay? So really what this is doing is this is creating a product, okay? Cool. So in this code for the post mapping, we need to create a product. And then what we're going to do is we're going to return a redirect. Always, always, always redirect when you're doing a post. Okay. I think I talked about that already in this series, but if I haven't, well, take my word for it. You should always redirect. So we can redirect back to slash products, which all this does is an HTTP get, which then will hit the get mapping, which would then return the product page. Okay, that's essentially all that we're doing here. So there's nothing fancy going on. When we post to products, all we're doing is redirecting to the get mapping here, and it's gonna you know, return the product template, which doesn't yet exist. So for now, that's all it's doing. So let's create the product template. So in our templates directory, we'll create a new file called product.html. And let's copy paste from like the index page, just cause I don't, I'm lazy and I don't want to, uh, I don't know why I didn't specify a doc type. Usually you want to specify a doc type to make the browser not have to guess what the, the, the document type is. Um, did I not do that anywhere? Yeah, I did doc type HTML doc. Yeah. Okay. So I just forgot it on that page. Uh, we'll call this uh, fresh votes products or something like that. And we'll have it say, you know, product or something like that in the, in the page. Uh, okay. So I, I don't know if I need to reboot my server, but I will. Oh shoot. Yeah. I need to save the dashboard first. Actually, let me cancel. What have I done? Oh, right. I need to get rid of this. This is no longer useful or needed. So let's reboot. I'll take a sip of coffee. And then hopefully if all goes well, uh, we will be able to log in and we will be able to um, click on create a product. And essentially it's going to, like I said, it's going to go to the post first because this is this posts uh, to the products endpoint. So it's going to go into the product controller post mapping create product method. And then it's just going to redirect to slash products, which is going to then go into the get mapping, which is going to return the product template, which we just created uh, over here. Okay. So that's the convoluted route that this is going to take. But let's see what happens. Create a product. Boom. Product. Beautiful. So um, that's one step, but now we want this to actually do something. Okay. So we want to actually, when we click on create a product, we want this to actually create a product in the database and redirect us to that product that we just created. Um, so yeah, that's something that will be the next step that we will tackle in the next video. So can't wait to see you there. Take care of yourself. Happy learning and bye for now.